I think uh, most of us, uh, you know, uh, would admire and appreciate the beautiful, um, you know, potteries that we see around, and uh, be it made of clay or uh, ceramic, uh, you know, these be these beautiful vessels, and especially if you've got the wonderful text on it, we would be, you know, so um, interested in looking at the text. So I think, uh, you know, likewise, um, it's kind of. I would say it's kind of touching if we're thinking of how God is the porter and we're the clay, the kind of love relationship. He's trying to make each and every one of us uh, quite unique in his own uh, creation and design and what he wants us to be, ultimately, for each individual um, child that um, you know he loves and treasures. And, uh, and likewise, uh, hopefully his word would be like, you know, a decoration for us that we can uh, carve um, deeply in our hearts and um, make it like you know a beautiful decoration to his glory um, but before all this beautiful outcome and stuff um, no doubt that uh, these beautiful ceramics out there are the vessels that would have to go through the um, the kiln the kiln process the heating the burning process in the kiln and um, that's what makes them you know tough strong durable vessels Likewise, we uh, God wants us to go through these uh, heart trainings, um, acting His word out, which is uh, not easy. Um, ultimately, is to make us uh, strong soldiers for Him, to glorify His name. Um, so, um, on the daily basis, uh, we, you know, we should uh, read His words and read the Bible. It's like our food for us to digest and grow up and then we pray is like the drink that uh, can really you know um, be part of our body system so with the food and the drink with prayer and reading of his words every day it can give us the kind of strength to move forward to be strong um, and uh, be qualified just like John and then you know once you've digested the words and stuff then you're qualified to share and to speak for God. I guess that's about it for the whole of chapter 10. That's the bottom line is God wants us to eat the little book um, and be qualified and uh, be ready for him to utilize us to be his vessel to um, to, to his glory. Um, uh, maybe I'll give you a little bit of my spiritual background. My pastor was uh, born again and under uh, uh, her pastor, Dr. Johnson, who was uh, the greatest evangelist, um, uh, or, or I would say a prophet of the East, and um, who, you know, who actually uh, passed away in 1945 in China after he has finished his uh, PhD in New York in America. And, uh, you know, he went through a period of uh, time being locked up in a mental hospital for 139 days, not that not that he was crazy or anything, but it's just that when after he was born again, and God, um, you know, he saw the Lord Jesus and how God told him to change his name to John to open the way to be a messenger of light. He could see those people around him. Um, you know, he was also studying in a theological school or whatever that they that just were not born again, and he was telling them so enthusiastically about being born again so um, his uh, I would say his zeal got over him and people thought it was crazy to start talking about being born again you know there's a lot of people that just think that uh, being a Christian and just that's it you go to heaven and but you know so he he really learned about this being born again because um, um, you know he, he was born in a Christian family his father was the first pastor in Hinghua China so it, you know, um, but he he didn't know what born again was all about. He could have been preached at a very young age, at the age of nine. Um, but um, you know, but in any case, uh, you know that's the bottom line. He was saying that he had uh, wrote uh, his written three diaries during his uh, time of being locked up, 139 days in the mental hospital. And then when he was released, uh, you know, um, during the time when he was uh, in the mental hospital, God revealed to him a lot of things, a lot of um, stuff that 
he was able to prophesy even uh, with regards to his own life that he would be living for about 15 years and that he would die and that his life would be divided into five phases you know and um, it all came to pass and uh, uh, I've never seen anyone uh, any evangelist I don't know but I've I've never heard anyone like as powerful as him um, his emphasis was really confessing and really th thoroughly confessing and being born again um, in a very um, thorough manner before God and uh, and then you know and then he would uh, after everyone one is um, cleared of their sins he was uh, was able to pray one by one to as many as like to five thousand people I don't know how many but it's a lot of people and one of them was my pastor she uh, she had a blocked nose for 15 years no matter what she couldn't get it cured and um, you know um, and so after being born again um, my pastor was also born uh, in a Christian family but again you know she wasn't born again just you know being a Christian doesn't make you become born again or truly converted so um, she was uh, you know born again and uh, under John Soong, Dr. John Soong's sermon and he cured her blocked nose you know her blocked nose and um, and then she followed him and uh, never got married and really, um, you know, preached and uh, became, you know, opened up her house. You know, she had uh, a house church and I attended her service and um, and uh, he did a lot of miracles. Even my pastor could do also miracles. And uh, it, I mean, they're not like, you know, promoting a miracle healing session or anything like that. That's, that's not the thing, which is what you're seeing today, a lot of them. And uh, with lots of trauma. Um, okay, uh, uh, my cat is calling uh, um, in the back, back in back in the background. You can hear my cat. Um, but um, in any case, God revealed a lot of things to John Sung, and he could accurately prophesy. So, likewise, if we're able to eat the little book, the mysteries of God, and, and digest it as being part of us, we can accurately speak what the future is all about. We can prophesy. We can be like the prophets of God. So, um, you know, most importantly is to not just to read. Um, of course, it could be very sweet, like Dr. Johnson said, it was like, you know, very sweet when you received the revelation and stuff. It was, you know, it's really sweet. And he was about, you know, he was um, writing it down and stuff. But to act it out, it's extremely bitter. I guess that's a challenge that we have. And, uh, has, uh, you know, we're, we're not alone, each one of us has to go through that process um, in order to be strong, to be hardy soldiers for the Lord and to glorify His name. I guess that's about it for this chapter. And uh, thank you for watching and listening.